We are talking about Pythagorean theorem and its converse, and we want to use the Pythagorean theorem, and we want to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. So the Pythagorean theorem. In a right triangle, the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs is equal to the square of the length of the hypotenuse. So the first thing you have to talk about is which ones are the legs and which one is the hypotenuse. So here we have a rough, very simple uh, illustration of the proof of Pythagorean theorem. So here we have a right angle. So the hypotenuse is always the side that is opposite uh, the right angle. So C in this case is the hypotenuse. So C is the hypotenuse. And we have this square here. So this dimension is C and this dimension is C. And we can calculate the area. So the area of the square is C squared. Now we have two legs. Uh, this is a leg right here. That's that, that leg right there. That's the A value. And if this side is A and this side is A, the area of this square is A squared. Uh, next, we have another leg, which we have our B value. And that is the leg right there. And that's the B value. And if this is B, and this is a square, so this is B, so then the area of this is B squared. Now the area is written here is 36.57 centimeters. And the area is written here is 78.37 centimeters squared. Forgot my square units right here. And the area for this uh, square right here is 41.80 centimeters squared. So if we add 41.80 plus 36.57, we get 78.37. So that's just a, a really rough proof of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It says, uh, next we want to use, if the triangle ABC is a right triangle, then this always exists. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And we talked about this. The one opposite is the hypotenuse, and then we have two legs. So the hypotenuse is always the larger side, and that's always the side that is by itself on the, on, on the equal side by itself, and the two legs are added together. So we're looking at a couple examples here, and the first question that you need to ask is, uh, which side is C or which side is the hypotenuse? And the examples say calculate for x. So here's the 90 degree angle, little box in the corner. So our hypotenuse is opposite. So in this case, we have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. And we can substitute in our values. And it doesn't matter which one's a or b, just as long as both legs touch that 90 degree angle. So our hypotenuse is going to be x squared. And then we have our a squared, in this case we'll say is 24. Uh, 
plus our b squared, we're going to say is 10. So we get x squared is equal to 24 squared. If we use our calculator, we should get 576. And 10 squared is 100. Then we can add those two together. And we get 676. And that is equal to x squared. Now the way that we, now we have to solve this and the inverse operation of x squared is we need to take the square root of both sides. So we take the square root and the square, square root cancels the square. And we take the square root of the right side of the equation and when we type this in our calculator, when we type this in our calculator, we hit second, and second activates all the blue keys on the calculator, and the square root is right above the x squared button. So the square root pops up there, then we can type in 676, and then hit enter, and we get an answer of 26. So we get x is equal to 26. And if we're thinking about the problem, uh, our hypotenuse should always be the longest side. So if we have 24 and 10, uh, 26 needs to be longer than both of those if we did it correctly. Uh, next one we have, again, decide which one is the hypotenuse. So here is the 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse is opposite. And so we have C squared is equal to the two other sides added together. So we have A squared plus B squared. And we can substitute in the values that we know. So the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 10 squared. Then we can say our a value is x squared. And we can say our b value is 2 squared of 2. And we have to use parentheses for this one. 2 square root of 2 squared. The reason that we have to use the parentheses is because the 2 has to be distributed to both parts of that uh, so we can simplify this a little bit 2 squared is 4 and 2 or the square root of 2 squared is 2 so that is equal to 8 and also we have uh, the square root of 10 squared that cancels and that's just equal to 10. So our new equation is 10 is equal to x squared plus 8. Now we go to solve this and we're still going to use the process that we've um, used before, which is GEMDAS. And we're going to solve working our way back this way. So we look for addition or subtraction first. In this case, we do have addition or subtraction. So we're going to subtract 8 from both sides of the equal sign. Our 8s cancel. And we're left with... 2 is equal to x squared. Next, we look for multiplication and division. We don't have any, so we don't have to worry about those two. 
And next we look at the exponents. And we do have an exponent of x squared. So we want to take the square root of both sides. Square root of both sides. And the square root and the square cancel. And on the right side, we're left with just x. And we can't simplify this any further, so we just leave it as our answer is the square root of 2. So that would be the side length there. Here we have example C. And <clears throat> again, the first thing we want to identify is the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degree. So we can write it down as x squared is equal to the square of the two other sides. So we have uh, 10 squared and we have 8 squared. So x squared is equal to 100 plus 64. So x squared is equal to 164. These two we can add together, so we get 164. And then we can take the square root of both sides because, again, we go back to Gemdes, and we look here. On the right-hand side, we just have a constant. On the left-hand side, we just have the exponent, so we don't have addition and subtraction. We don't have multiplication or division. We go right to the exponent, and we can take the square root of both sides of the equation. And the reason we did that is the square root cancels the square, and we get x is equal to, and we can rewrite 164 as 4 times 41, all under the radical. We do not know the square root of 41, but we know the square root of 4 is 2, so we can simplify this just a little bit further, and we can say x is equal to 2 square root of 41, and then that would be the final answer.